Let me uh, first of all start by thanking all of our first responders who were part of the celebration today who were out keeping everyone safe uh, and making sure that we had a successful parade and rally. This being the now third rally that uh, parade and rally that I've been a part of in planning for the city of Denver, I can tell you that this is something that the city of Denver does well. Uh, it's a huge undertaking, the magnitude of which we don't, many cities never experience. But multiple, multiple agencies and stakeholders have to be involved. And uh, today's event was no different than the others that we've had in a sense that they, it went well uh, for the most part um, with all the agencies involved. What we're going to do today is make sure, have uh, Chief Ron Thomas give you an update on the situation regarding one of our uh, decorated sergeants and officers, Justin Dodge, uh, who was involved in an unfortunate incident as part of the parade today. Uh, we also have two of Denver Health's finest physicians who will be able to answer some of the questions. Um, and then as I know, you already know, unfortunately we also had a shooting incident. And we never want anything to go wrong with regards to um, these sort of incidents uh, to occur. Either the officer being injured or once again someone or some people deciding to make a very bad decision. This was an event that involved anywhere from 700 to a million people today. For the most part, went very well. Toward the end, um, as Chief Thomas will report, um, an incident um, that uh, wounded two people once again involving guns. And here we are again having to talk about someone endangering the lives of people who came to celebrate. I want to thank the million or so people who came out today who did the right thing and had a great time celebrating our Denver Nuggets and their championship. Um, but rest assured that our Denver Police Department will not uh, rest until we uh, apprehend the individuals who are responsible for today's shootings and, and unfortunately injured two people. Shame on them for once again uh, marring what had been otherwise a pretty successful event for the entire state of Colorado. With that, let me turn it over to Chief Thomas, who will uh, update us on uh, Sergeant Dodge. Thank you, Mayor, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. I want to uh, begin by talking about our, our injured officer. Uh, what I understand occurred at approximately 11.30 as uh, a fire truck that uh, was transporting several players was rounding the corner at 13th in Cherokee. Uh, we had an officer who was at uh, the passenger side front of that vehicle, of that, of that fire truck. Um, there were people that were that had kind of made their way into the street and he was sort of uh, trying to protect those individuals uh, from the fire truck. Uh, had to step kind of closer to the vehicle and the, the, the fire truck uh, began to roll up the back of his left leg, uh, trapping him underneath the vehicle, uh, causing a very significant uh, lower leg injury. Um, uh, we were able to extricate him from underneath the fire truck, load him up uh, in, in an ambulance, and rush him here to Denver Health Medical, where he is currently undergoing treatment. In fact, he's in uh, surgery right now. Um, and I'll, I'll defer to the doctor here to talk more about his medical condition. Approximately an hour after that incident, um, we had uh, a shooting incident that occurred at 17th and Curtis. Um, this is well after the parade and after the festivities in Civic Center Park. I understand that there were people that were leaving uh, from the downtown area when this incident occurred. And we had uh, a black male uh, uh, firing a weapon, striking two individuals. We believe that this was a targeted incident. Uh, these, uh, those two males uh, were located by responding officers and uh, transported by ambulance here to Denver Health where they are uh, in serious condition but also receiving treatment here. Uh, we believe that this was completely unassociated uh, to the parade and the subsequent events. Um, uh, just uh, again, as the mayor alluded to, um, individuals uh, armed with weapons um, acting irresponsibly in, in our community. So at this time, I'll defer uh, to the doctor to talk more about uh, uh, the condition of our officer. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Thomas. Um, my name is Stephen Wolf. I'm the director of emergency medicine here at Denver Health. Um, 
around 11.45, we did have an officer transported uh, to the emergency department emergently. He presented, he was received by a robust trauma team. Um, and uh, as of this time, he is in stable condition. He does have a severe uh, limb-threatening injury. He was taken to the operating room by our world-class uh, orthopedic team and uh, after being cleared by our trauma team. So um, there were two other individuals who were brought separately um, uh, for gunshot wounds. Both of them are in serious condition uh, and we don't have extensive information about, uh, about the background of the story between of those individuals. Why don't we go ahead and open up for any questions? I think we can take a couple. Sure, please, Dr. Wolf. So I think as of right now, we can't say uh, necessarily what the outcome will be, but I can guarantee you that our orthopedic services will do everything possible uh, to preserve the limb. answer is that uh, yes downtown Denver is still a safe place to, to come unfortunately we have again uh, far too many guns in our society far too many individuals that uh, that act irresponsibly with guns and that's certainly something that we as a community need to continue to address um, uh, we continue to take uh, measures to keep the downtown areas uh, safe we have a significant contingent of officers that uh, that are deployed in our downtown core uh, particularly um, you know on the weekends uh, during the entertainment hours and so uh, we believe that we can keep the area safe uh, we believe that we will continue to uh, keep people that, that come downtown to, to, to live and play uh, in our downtown area um, and again uh, as a community we need to continue to, to do things to remove guns from our street and keep them out of the hands of folks that uh, that act irresponsibly. Well, you know, unfortunately, you know, I think this just speaks to the fact that individuals now in our community are emboldened to 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 act in an irresponsible way, regardless of who's watching. Uh, I think that's a significant concern. I think we should all be worried about that. Uh, certainly, um, you know, we always have our head on a swivel, and so we are aware of the fact that these things can uh, certainly happen despite our presence. Um, we hope that our presence uh, uh, creates safety. We certainly, you know, want to keep our eyes open and, and pay particular uh, attention to to concerning behaviors and things like that so that we can uh, take guns off of people before they have the opportunity to use them. I can tell you that we have uh, recovered nearly hundreds of guns in the downtown core specifically off of individuals that uh, may have had the opportunity to use them had we not taken them off their hands. The mayor mentioned that his officer just dodged. Is he a squad officer from the post? What he does? He, yes, so he... Um, is a veteran officer. He's a sergeant assigned to our SWAT uh, division. He's been a member of our SWAT uh, uh, team for a number of years. Very decorated officer. You said emboldened. People feel people feeling emboldened. Uh, I can't really. You know, I mean, I, I think that uh, you know, I, I tend to believe that surety of consequences uh, tends to discourage folks from acting irresponsibly, um, and and so that's something that we certainly need to address with our criminal justice system. So you have recovered hundreds of weapons in the core. Yes. Can you quantify how many of those were possessed legally? I would say the majority of them were illegally possessed, either possessed by someone who uh, is prohibited from possessing a weapon, a juvenile, someone who is intoxicated uh, in possession of that weapon. Uh, so uh, the large majority of those weapons were taken and seized as evidence in, in a crime. On the issue of people are in the streets during this parade, did something go wrong with God? 
Yes, fair question. So, you know, we think that we had a pretty significant uh, plan. I think that there were uh, reinforcements to keep uh, folks out of the street, uh, significant fencing. We had officers throughout the parade route. We had officers that were following uh, all of the vehicles that the players were on. Um, and obviously they were able to overcome that. Um, uh, and really the, the only safety challenge that, uh, that we faced at that point was, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the injury that happened to the officer as he was protecting, uh, you know, these community members from the fire trucks. Would you say that this may not have happened had they not been rushing that fire truck? Well, certainly. But, I mean, I think the officer was doing his job uh, protecting the public and, and uh, you know, unfortunately was injured. Sergeant Dodge was at the truck. Had he been with that fire truck the entire time marching with that truck? No, he was, uh, he was following that truck. There was a pretty significant contingent of officers that was following that fire truck because, again, it had uh, several players that were on that truck. A step further than it is true, but do you feel he saved anybody else from injury at that point? Well, I, I think a lot of that is speculative, but certainly there was a potential for folks to run out in front of the fire truck get caught up underneath the wheel of the fire truck uh, as, as he did. And so I think that him being placed where he was did prevent the, the likelihood of someone being injured. Mayor, do you think? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I could tell you, yeah. Do you think that making an executive order for this type of event to prohibit the, the guns to go to the street will make the safety of the citizen better? No, it doesn't require executive order. I tell, I agree with Chief Thomas that uh, we're not new to these plans. This is, you know, you, you might see a few people who might penetrate the, the uh, barriers, uh, but for the most part, people were safe. And I, I was in the parade. I saw people who were on the, on the wrong side of the barriers, but for the most part, they were hugging up against the barriers. They weren't getting into the street. I was not uh, at this location when the incident occurred, so I don't know what happened. Uh, so I can't speak I can't speak to it but I can tell you that the plans that are laid by the Denver Police Department in partnership with the other agencies uh, Department of Transportation Infrastructure and others um, it was a pretty good plan um, and we have done this parade now three times in the last 12 years or at least in the last eight years and we've not seen this type of challenge before let me while I have the mic just go back to Sean's question because I think it's important for us to address this situation this is not about downtown if you look at what's occurred here in the last 72 hours in the metro region, where we've had um, uh, shootings, um, road rage in Aurora, road rage on I-25, where you see what happened with the two gatherings, the large gathering after the Nuggets won the championship on Monday, and then again today. This really is about young people getting their hands on guns. These are young people who they're 19 and 22 and 25 whose lives, if they're not ended by the gunshot, they're ruined and ended because they're going to spend the rest of their lives in jail. And if you want to know why people are emboldened, there is a very prolific fentanyl and drug trade happening all over this country, and we have not been immune to it. So join with us in being honest about what's happening here, that we got to look and understand that our young people are getting their hands on guns, they don't know how to solve crises or challenges by having a conversation. They're shooting at one another. And it makes absolutely no sense. And unfortunately, as Chief Thomas pointed out, this may have been a very targeted situation as part of a drug trade, not only on Monday, but today. And it's making everyone else unsafe, including the 200 officers who were there on patrol on Monday, as well as today. So we need to just be honest. This is not about downtown. It would be a mistake for us to talk about it being an unsafe downtown. Denver downtown is no more unsafe than it is in any other neighborhood in the city or in Aurora or Commerce City for that matter. Thomas, quick question um, about another issue that occurred. Nico Yokochi's flight hit by a beer can. Have there been any arrests there? Is, is anyone looking into that? What's happening right now? So we will certainly look into uh, all of those incidents. We did make two arrests during the parade. Uh, one individual we uh, contacted had a weapon. Another individual was involved in a disturbance and had a warrant, and so he was taken to jail. So those are two arrests that were made um, 
uh, specifically associated to uh, to the parade. Uh, we do have a number of cameras that were along the parade route and in the uh, in the area of Civic Center Park, and so certainly we will be combing through that to see if we can identify anyone who may have uh, thrown a beer can and, and struck someone. Is there a chance that the people who were going towards a fire truck where the sergeant was injured, that they could be charged with anything? You know, I, I don't think that that would be appropriate to do. You know, you know, the officer was obviously doing his job protecting the public. It's unfortunate that, that he sustained an injury, but I don't think that it would be uh, fair or reasonable to blame uh, these individuals who are just, uh, you know, trying to celebrate uh, uh, a Nuggets win. Be sending out a picture of the sergeant that we could use in our reporting this afternoon. We can do that. You're welcome. Data on the investigation into that shooting. I know that you said it looked like a targeted shooting. Do you have any idea? So uh, we, you know, we've obviously identified the two individuals that are here at the hospital. We have a photograph, so uh, a lot of cameras in the area where this occurred. So we actually do have a photograph of the suspect. Um, they're unidentified at this point and certainly not in custody, but um, uh, we're confident, I think, in our investigative ability to ultimately identify that person and bring that person to justice. Um, I'll have to talk to my PO team about that, so thank you. Um, the officer's injury or, or the uh, no I don't I don't think that it was a scooter related incident I think that there was um, um, there was an acquaintance that uh, uh, involving the, the three individuals that were involved in the shooting looking at how events like this are handled in the future I know the mayor has said that it went pretty well but will you look at this to perhaps see if safety strategies will be amended in the future? You know, we're a learning organization, so certainly we will uh, look at this uh, particular parade just as we looked at the parade that occurred when the avalanche won. Um, and we will continue to, to meet with our local partners as well as uh, other jurisdictions across this, the country um, to, to look at how to better prepare for these types of celebrations. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Good job. Thank you.